Hello, here's a few quick tips for working in the uh, Lightwave's native instance generator. It's kind of a follow-up to uh, an earlier tutorial I did a couple of years ago uh, with a few tweaks and additions. Okay, let's start off with our basic model. So it's just a simple box in this case, which I'm going to lathe out from the center point, 24 pieces. That looks pretty good. Uh, let's say that is our design. We're happy with that. That's exactly what it will look like when it's instanced. But for now, we only need a segment of this. This is where users of other 3D apps will point their fingers and laugh. Plonk, delete those. We don't want to see inside, so we'll select the endpoints and cap them. I've on purposely made this object blocky to show uh, an issue I was having with the previous tutorial, but this is all good. Save and center layout. We've made it to layout. Now what we're gonna do, select the segment, our little piece here, item, clone, clone instance, which will straight away create another and add an instance generator to it. So I don't need to see the original segment, so let's turn that off hide it from the render so it's with that selected the instance selected rebel hill on the rebel rebel hill rebel rebel, rebel hill <laughs> on the forums wrote an excellent little workflow flow script which will launch the instance generator without having having to go via the properties tab so I'll put a link to that in the description I've mapped that script to a keyboard shortcut so I can pop it open straight away. So let's get set up. Let's select the segment. What we want is a radial array on the Y. Actually, we want to see it as well. That'd be useful let's turn that on. Uh, straight away, go to rotation, item, rim. Let's knock up our instance amount. So I think it's eight, isn't it? But because we've got a radius, there we go, we've closed it. That's exactly what we need. So uh, that's good. Now, the issue I was having with my previous tutorial was animating the end angle. If you see, if you've got quite a blocky model like I have here, you will see rather unpleasant crossing over like that, which is rather ugly and not at all what you want. So the way around, the way around this, is sadly <laughs> to go nodal this next step isn't necessary but if you have a copy of uh, OD tool set this will help you visualize what's uh, what's going on so if you go to the uh, geometry tab you should see OD instance IDs it's pretty obvious what this does but because uh, radius is at zero they're all set on top of each other so let's separate them out because we can always zero that out later. Two meters, there we go. So we got eight instances, as you can see, zero to seven. Okay, let's go nodal. So click on this. Uh, first thing we're gonna do though, on the scale, we're gonna select uniform. Uniform relates to this scale here, whereas random, would be scale min, scale, scale max, which is uh, not that obvious, but uh, there you go. Uh, so what we need is a scalar, and we're gonna keep this very simple. So we're gonna go for a logic node. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our index, our item index, which is this here, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, into A, and our scalar into B. Oh, hello. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if A is less than B, scale it to one. If it is false, scale it to nothing. So let's click that into there. And what we'll see, zero, one 
actually just uh, just above one I should show that yep so this is ID 2 so we want 2 speed over 2 and so on which means if we animate this over time mm -hmm. Let's just nudge it over. Let's just nudge it under a little bit. What we should find is we've animated our index ID. Knocking that radius back closes the hole. And we can obviously give it quite a nice smooth movement. If we want it in the other direction, uh, let's try A is greater than B. There we go. So we've started off full on to nothing. So you could duplicate that up, add it together, so you could animate on and off. Don't forget as well, there's always a bit of secondary animation you could add just by animating the, oops, not the button, just by animating the heading in this case. So that's quite simple, so it's a nice, nice bit of, like I say, secondary movement. Perhaps the other direction just to counter. I'm going to show the time offset function next. There's a couple of bugs to be aware of, but I've got a couple of workarounds as well. Simple object here. This is a shape that I'm going to map the instances to, and there's a box uh, which I'm just going to apply the animation to. So let's get the instances on the shape first. So uh, select shape, P for properties, instance generator. Okay, I want to add the object box. That's easy enough. All the polygons I need, maximum. Let's have a look at them. Rotation, normal. Okay, that was pretty straightforward. Let's hide the original item. Actually, no, let's, let's keep the original item because I'm going to animate that but I'm going to hide the shape. Here we go. Let's start with animating the box, but a little bit of rotation on the box. Let's start with, firstly, uh, let's go 360 degrees, nice and quick. Here we go. Second, straight away, See what's going on there. So let's jump into the instance generator. First thing I'm going to do to get the offsets to work is put it in parent space. There you go, nothing happens. Great start. We're going to uh, start with the nodes. We're going to go and use those index IDs, same as before, and we're just going to need a simple, oh, it's already there, multiply, diddly into time offset. But we're going to multiply it by minus 0 0.3. Excellent. But no, not excellent. What's going on here? It's very hard to tell. And the reason it's hard to tell is because there's a bug. Fortunately, our workaround is quite simple. So let's create a null. Let's call it uh, uh, box parent. And we're quite simply just going to parent the box animation, the box with the animation, to that box parent. Then we're going to jump back to the instance generator. We're going to replace that, no, not that one, that edit replace object with box parent. And then we're going to click the hierarchy icon. Whee, and then all of a sudden, 
everything works as it's supposed to. We can drag and make the rotation a bit slower. So we can delay the rotation a bit more. There we go. So now that's selected, we can be a bit more creative with our box animation. And you've got to bear in mind that the animations, or this offset animation, only works with rotation, position, and scale. If you uh, start adding deformers and that sort of stuff, it's just not going to work. The next featured bug happens when you scale to zero. So if I take my original box with the animation on it, slap a keyframe in there, and then if I just move it so it's so there's still other oh, animation, so the offset's still working. So if I were then to now scale it to zero, you'll notice straight away it just cuts out the other instances. Not good. However, what I found is if you scale to something really small, there, on the next frame, launch it into space. should work it's a bit of a hack but it's uh it does the trick another thing to bear in mind as well this uh, parenting this null here has to be at the top level so for instance if this parent is a child we're back to uh, it, it cancels out something goes wrong doesn't like it so with that at the top level everything will work so there's a few tips for working in the instance generator I uh, hope there's enough there to get the ball rolling for you thank you